the Trump victory in the United States of America will without a doubt bring the Liberal Party back from their constituency break with fear and loathing in their actions and words. I'm here to help you navigate through that. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. In the spirit of full disclosure, I will tell you that I have someone in my life who's very important to me. She's 21 years old. I won't mention her name or anything of that nature, but we were speaking earlier. We were having a discussion, and uh, it turns out that she, being of that age, is quite concerned about the impact of bodily autonomy. And I know from experience that the liberals are going to try to fall back on bodily autonomy in a way to scare and terrify you. And of course, they will always try to conflate the Canadian system, which is not the American system. But people, for some reason, fall for it, which I guess is why I'm what's inspired this video, because I don't want, you know, hurt you to. Because when speaking with her, I found out that there was quite a lot of anxiety in the in her age group about this. And I thought to myself, wow, so they're really it's really working this 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 information. Uh, tactic that the far left liberals are trying to attempting to utilize to to garner votes, and so I thought, well, I better do something about it because I I see where the confusion may lie, and I understand that sometimes all of the gobbledygook and all of these um, the terminology might throw you off. Now I, I got to lay down the foundation for you so that you can understand exactly where we're happening. So we're going to talk about the overturning of Roe versus Wade in the United States, which technically has absolutely zero impact on the Canadian system, but I will get to that. So to understand what happened in Roe versus Wade, you must go back to the very beginning of the country of the United States of America, all the way back to the foundation, understanding what some events that happened in those, those years in that time is the only way to know the truth about Roe versus Wade. So, 1776, everybody's probably aware, a bunch of fellas got together in Philadelphia, they drafted a constitution for a new country, they said to themselves, we're going to be breaking away from the empire of Britain. Then there was a war, seven years long, it lasted, 1883 it ended. So now they have this constitution that they drafted, and they're running around all the regions of the like, you know, what we call today states, regions of the of the um, United States, trying to get everybody to ratify the document of the, of the Constitution. However, people weren't having it. They were like, no, man, I'm good, right? I get that we fought together, but now we're just going to keep our little zone here because we don't want to have the same problems that we had in Britain. We don't want to have some lord coming over us. Our little section is great. And appreciated that in those times, there was no asphalt, there was no cars, there was no bicycles. Everything moved, you know, by wagon or by horse. And it certainly didn't move very much in the wintertime. And when it did move, there was a lot of time waiting for people to come together, right? Because the outlying regions would have to wait until Sunday. So they would come in, they would do their service. Then after the service, the people that were trying to get them to sign these doc, this document would meet everybody in the church. Everybody would have a big talk. Maybe there was some sent by a horse, you know, by a courier. The point I'm making is that after seven more years, so 1776 to, to eight, 1783, and then in 1783, they didn't actually ratify the Constitution until 1791. And when they did so, they did so with what's called the Bill of Rights in America, which is 10 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten amendments. Now, everybody says to themselves, well, I know what the First Amendment is. I don't even know what the Second Amendment is. And many of you might even know what the Fifth Amendment is. But can you tell me what the Tenth is? Now, it's important to understand that without that Tenth Amendment, Roe versus Wade would never have come into question. I will tell you what the Tenth Amendment is right now. Here, it's on screen. This is taken right from the Congress website of the Congress of the United States website. The Constitution of the United States, the Tenth Amendment, which is known as the Bill of Rights. 
Right. There's, there's a lot in the title there, just to sort of FYI, because even though the Constitution was drafted, it wasn't drafted with individual rights. And so it took them years to put together this package of 10 amendments, 10 things they wanted to change to the Constitution. And this one states, Constitution of the United States, 10th Amendment, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the state respectively or to the people. Now, what that says is, the Constitution of the United States might have some power in it, wording in it that gives power to the country, to the federal organization. If it's not listed there, and if it's not specifically prohibited to go to the people or what they're referring to, the, what they call the people, but what you and I can think of as the state itself, then by default, it goes to the state. Now, for all you out there that are, you know, living in other countries and don't, in Canada especially, the province doesn't have that kind of juice. But in the United States of America, they ensured in their, in their building of the country that the states would have their own right to self-govern if it wasn't already laid out in the Constitution. And that's what the 10th Amendment says. It says that if the federal government don't have the jurisdiction laid out in the Constitution, then it does by default go to the state. So now you're thinking to yourself, okay, that's great, Sterling. We're back in 1791. We got an image of a bunch of guys running around in this giant church, all everybody having arguments and, you know, horses riding through the snow. What does that got to do with bodily autonomy? Well, I'm glad you asked. When Roe versus Wade was overturned, it was the 10th Amendment that did it. Because the Constitution does not grant the power of the federal government the right to dictate to the state who can do what with their body. And so the, the Supreme Court of the United States concurred that the 10th Amendment prevented that ruling of Roe versus Wade to be constitutional. And as a result, the power that is, is given to the person, the, the, the people, to have the autonomy over their own body is by default given to the individual state. So what we see when the Liberal Party starts to tell you that they're going to take it away is we actually empowered the people to have a grander choice. Now I can go on to say that, you know, 17 states have already changed their own particular state constitutions to grant the, the liberty to, you know, we can talk about how Donald Trump election, there was, I think, 11 uh, bodily autonomy questions on, on various ballots all over the country. But that's not what we're here to discuss. We're not here to talk about Roe versus Wade. We're here to understand the difference between the Canadian system and the American system and how if you hear a liberal telling you that somehow what's happened in America is going to happen up here in Canada, they are simply gaslighting you in an effort to terrorize you, to scare you into voting for them because they don't care about you, but they only care about the vote. That's it. That's all. Hopefully that makes clear to you the difference between the two systems and why that was overturned on a state's rights issue, something that Canada does not possess. Now, for Canadians, the individual that we that is in question is Dr. Henry Morgenthaler. And there's something that you should establish, right? Before uh, universal health care in Canada, most hospitals are founded by religious orders. A lot of people don't realize that, but most of the hospitals out there were either most like 90, 95% of them were founded by Christians and the rest were founded by, uh, um, Jewish the, I don't know that there's any that are founded, uh, in the history of Canada by followers of Islam, though I suppose they must have them. I just don't think that they're necessarily a part of the c culture, if I'm making any sense, especially not in the 1960s. When in the 1960s, the federal government decided that they would take over the healthcare system because of the 
um, universal health care. So up to that point, it had all been an individualized stuff. But because they are founded in religious orders, many of the, what you and I today would refer to as nurses were actually religious individuals who, as a result, didn't want to perform this, this action. And so when the, when the government took over the, the bodily autonomy, the hospital said, we're not going to perform it. Doesn't matter what you say, we're just not doing it. You have, might have the right to bodily autonomy, but the other individual has the right to say no. And so we come into the in, to this gentleman, Dr. Henry Morgenthaler, who would open, he opened up private clinics, which if any of you were alive at that time, you would remember. But for Canada, it was kind of an interesting, sort of a violent time. Many of his clinics were firebombed. Many of his doctors were targeted. And there was a lot of social upheaval. Then in 1988, the Canadian Supreme Court ruled on the side of, of uh, Dr. Morgenthaler saying that, you know, people had the right for bodily autonomy. And this enacted, because it was the Supreme Court, the highest court in our land, this is what enacted this bodily autonomy rules in Canada itself. So where, where the, you might say to yourself, well, if they're both the Supreme Court, the difference is that the provinces don't have enacted it. They don't have a, there's no, nothing in, in our uh, charter that says that the provinces have the right to, to look after something if the federal government doesn't. I mean, we know that the provinces are looking after the healthcare system and that's, that was sort of something that they worked out and there's a lot of money that comes down, but the hospitals are no longer allowed to deny it based on their own personal belief and this without going into the ins and outs of the court case this is how we end up with bodily autonomy in Canada and of course we have what's called common law so when this what that means for any of that may not understand perhaps you're not you've come you know you don't know what that means is that anything that that anything that is uh, applied to a person in say Newfoundland is also applied to a person who's in, say, Yukon, right? It doesn't matter where you are. If you're under the Canadian flag, any rule that anything that happened in one part of the country, criminally or civilly, things like that, can be applied to the judge in the court that's in front of you. And when a judge makes a decision, that actually ripples across the country. So when the Supreme Court of Canada handed down this decision, it made it legal in Canada, rippled it across the country. Because the Supreme Court decided that it wasn't, you know, it was not uh, lawful to deny it. And remember that when the liberals try to tell you that it's the provinces that are in charge of the courts, they really are not. The laws that we are following are primarily handed down from on high. That's a different video. In this video, I want you to inoculate you to the fear that the liberals are going to try to, because they're going to come back from this constituency break and they right now are in meltdown, right? They're losing their minds because Donald Trump has won. The left is collapsing left, right, all like all over the place. People are, you know, getting upset. Corporations are next, right? Corporations are going to start to backpedal on all of this. And I don't want you to think to yourself that for some reason, if you pay the liberals all of your hard earned money, they're going to protect you. They don't, they don't, they don't have the right to, there's nobody that has the right to change that. To change it, you have to go back in front of the Supreme Court with some sort of technicality that because we don't have the 10th Amendment, Canada simply doesn't possess. Now, this is not a, 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 you know, I'm not talking about the right and the wrong of it. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm only trying to make you understand that don't let the liberals scare you into giving them your vote. If you want to vote for them, you go ahead, you do what you like. But don't do it rooted in a fear-based ignorance. Don't do it because you don't understand and, and you're not looking at, the, at the, the, the differences, the glaring differences between the two systems. Don't allow them to lead you down a path filled with fear and loathing when in reality you could live a better life if you just had a government that was more responsible with your money and the question of bodily autonomy is never going to come up. I mean, I get that it might come into your own personal world, but it's not going to be, there's no, not going to be some 
huge sociological shift. It's going to take quite a long time for that to happen. The difference being the systems are not the same. I know that you look at the countries and you think they're very similar. And I suppose in many ways they are. But the rule of law, the foundation of the, of the Constitution is not the same. It's not even close. So when you hear them trying to tell you that they're going to scare you with this, I want you to understand that what they're really, I mean, these people are most of them, most of these MPs are lawyers. They know exactly what I'm saying is true. They know it. But they will attempt to terrify you with it so they can manipulate you out of your vote. And that's what this video is about. This video is about you voting smartly. Making sure that you're not overreacting and that you're not vote casting your vote because somebody tricked you. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.